Hello, today is July 17th and I'm recording this from beautiful Alicante, Spain. The sun is just coming up. It's a gorgeous view out my window here and I'm getting ready to take my students to a company visit. I've been ha having a great opportunity to teach at the University of Alicante. If you ever get a chance to get to southern Spain, you really need to check it out. But this video is not about southern Spain. It is about journals. And I wanted to start out with talking a little bit about my experience with a full focus journal. This is produced by Michael Hyatt and his company. And a dear friend of mine, Andrew, gave me one of these to use this quarter. Uh, it works great for Andrew. He really likes it. He likes the way it brings focus to his life and to help him move forward on his goals. And I was feeling like getting too bogged down with the mundane things in my uh, to-do list and not moving forward. So I thought I'd give it a try. And so at the two week, approximate two week mark here, I want to tell you what I've found so far. First of all, um, Michael Hyatt has recorded a series of videos on how he thinks you should use this. This planner lasts an entire quarter. So there are pages for each day. Um, they have the day of the week as far as whether it's Wednesday or Thursday or whatever, but the date you fill in so it can work for any quarter. It's not hand printed in advance. All the pages are numbered, which I like because you can make an index if you have a lot of notes or something you want to go back to later. Uh, I find that sometimes I have ideas and I want to compile those later electronically. So the big things so far, I'm going to point out two. One was uh, the goals. So he has you have a goal summary and you write out 10 goals that you want to accomplish. <clears throat> um, you write out these 10 goals that you want to accomplish and you star the ones that you want to concentrate on this quarter or you want to make some progress on. The other thing I thought was very interesting about these goals is he has you write down what the goal is, your motivations for doing it, what is the reward, how are you going to reward yourself, are you going to celebrate in some way, uh, and what the next steps are. And I thought that was very powerful. So as you can see, there's a lot of things that are crossed off the list here. There's a lot of editing that I've done on these goal sheets. And that was because as I wrote them down and started to go through listing the motivations, listing the reward and the next steps, I either started to realize that um, this was not something that was really going to move me forward, was really not going to move me forward in my relationship with my wife and my family and my uh, colleagues at work or move me forward in my goals. Maybe they were more kind of a vanity m metric or something I was doing for my own ego. Um, so I found that very powerful because it allowed me to kind of filter and uh, focus on those goals. The other thing that I thought was very good was uh, the fact that you have to star just maybe uh, four of them that you want to work on. And it helps you realize that uh, you don't have to be working on everything all at the same time. But the other thing that I thought was very powerful and regardless of whatever planner I end up um, using in the end, uh, I'm going to keep this idea and that's writing out, writing out your ideal week. So whatever planner I end up deciding is better at the end of this, of this little experiment. I'm going to try this one for a quarter. I'm going to try the Panda Planner for another quarter. Um, I'm going to keep this idea. And this is writing down your ideal week. So it's really a template for that quarter of what you think your ideal week is going to be as far as how you're going to spend your time from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. And I thought this was powerful because it allowed me to kind of filter out some of the things that I wasn't going to get done. Right now I use OmniFocus and the Getting Things Done principles on the Mac. And that's great for keeping track of lots and lots of next tasks and projects. But the problem is that I end up with just too much on my plate. And it just gets overwhelming and it gets depressing because you don't get things done. So I thought this was very powerful. I have on here the things that I'm going to have to do um, as far as teaching, uh, making time for grading, making time for meetings with students, other faculty. And then those things are going to move me forward. So making sure I have time to exercise, making sure I have time to read and do a little of creative writing, 
um, making sure I have time to spend with my wife and we're uh, setting aside time uh, to uh, eat dinner together, to make dinner together, uh, to do some things to uh, rejuvenate on the weekends. Uh, and also then um, fitting in some of these other long-term things that are going to compound, like trying to learn a little bit of Spanish every day. So, so far, that's my impressions. Those are my, the, that isn't all that there is to this journal. There's obviously a lot more. They have uh, morning rituals and evening rituals. And uh, every week there's a big three as far as your goals. There's a big three on a daily basis as far as your goals or things you want to accomplish. There's um, reflections for the weekend. I will see how this works more when I get back into my regular routine. Right now we're highly scripted here in the uh, program in Alicante, so sometimes our weekends are uh, all scheduled up with uh, cultural events or uh, visits to uh, cultural sites with our students. So we'll see how it works out once I get back. But right now those are the big takeaways and that's it at the two week mark.